Last time, we introduced synthetic division, an easy method for dividing a polynomial by a linear factor. Link in the description to that video. One of the great uses of synthetic division comes from the remainder theorem, which tells us that if a polynomial f of x is divided by a linear factor x minus k, then the remainder that we get from that division is actually the function's value evaluated at k. If we divide a function f of x by, say, x minus 4, and we get a remainder of 10, that means f of 4 is equal to 10. It's a pretty useful theorem. Let's try it out to evaluate this function at x equals 2. By the remainder theorem, we can figure out what the function's value is at x equals 2 if we divide it by x minus 2 and then just look at the remainder. So we set up our synthetic division, which begins with a rectangle like that that's two rows high. In the first row, we put the coefficients of our polynomial, 4x cubed, 0x squared, minus 13x, and a constant of 10. Out front, we put the number being subtracted from x. That's the k value. In this case, that's 2. It's the point at which we're trying to evaluate the function. Then just carry out the synthetic division process. Bring that 4 down, multiply it by the k value, and then write it up here. 2 times 4 is 8. Add those together, that's 8. Hit it with another k, that's 16. Add those together, positive 3. Hit it with that k, that's 6. Add those together, and we get 16. And that is our remainder, which by the remainder theorem is the value of the function at 2, because this was the remainder when we divided by x minus 2. We can try evaluating the function the old-fashioned way to verify. If we plug 2 in, we'll have 4 times 2 cubed, which is 8, minus 13 times 2, so minus 26, and then plus 10. This is equal to 32 minus 26. 32 minus 26 is just 6, and then that gets added to 10, which is 16. So like we said, if we divide a polynomial by x minus k, the remainder is the value of the function at x equals k, although a particularly interesting case is when the remainder is 0, because that would tell us that x minus k must be a factor of the polynomial. If its remainder is 0, then it must be a factor. And then that would tell us that k0 is an x-intercept of the graph. If x minus k is a factor, and the remainder thus would be 0, that would mean that k0 is an x-intercept. Let's see an example like that. So we'll use the remainder theorem to evaluate this function at x equals negative 3. Thus, we'll need to divide the polynomial by x minus that x value. That x value is negative 3, so it's x minus negative 3, which is of course the same as x plus 3. So here's our setup. In the top row, we'll put the coefficients of the polynomial, 2, 7, minus 4, minus 27, and minus 18. Out front, we put the value we're subtracting from x, which in this case is negative 3. That's the x value at which we're trying to evaluate the function. Begin by bringing the 2 down, then hit it with a factor of negative 3, that's negative 6. Add those together to get positive 1, hit it with a negative 3 to get negative 3. Add those together to get negative 7, hit this with a factor of negative 3 to get positive 21. Add those together to get negative 6, and then hit this with a factor of negative 3 to get positive 18. Add those together to get our final remainder of 0. So this means x plus 3 is actually a factor of this polynomial, since the division resulted in a remainder of 0. And that means that the function's value at negative 3 is equal to 0. Negative 3 is actually a root of the polynomial. It's an x-intercept. We can use these facts to help us factor as well. Here is the polynomial again for your reference. And if we factor it, we get this. As you would expect in the factorization, we have x minus negative 3, or x plus 3. And looking at the graph, we can see that the function hits 0 at x equals negative 3. It's an x-intercept. So that's the remainder theorem. If we divide a polynomial f of x 
by x minus k, then the remainder is actually f of k, the value of the function evaluated at k, which is particularly interesting in the case where the remainder is zero. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and check out my pre-calculus course and pre-calculus exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. I'm a secular and aesthetic